Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where we will look up values between dates in Excel. Now this video has been prompted by a question I received in one of my training courses recently and it required some conditions to use as well. So in this video I want to show three examples. The first two will be more simple we will just look up a value between dates. And the third and final example will be more complex as we'll have extra conditions to apply. Beginning with our first example, I have a table named colors and it has these dates in the first column and in the color which I'd like to return. So I want to look for the date in column A within the ranges of dates there and return the correct colour. Now in this first example, the dates in the first column of the colours table are in order, which is not unexpected. And in a scenario like that, we can just use our classic VLOOKUP. So in cell B2, I can type equals VLOOKUP, look for the date there in cell A2, within the table which is colours and I'll just select it here as it's only small and it's on the same sheet comma return column 2 which is our colour and then I don't need to answer that last question because I am performing a range lookup I am looking in ranges of values i.e. these dates but let me select true which is the default anyway close bracket and run that and if I copy it down to my one extra date there we can see that it is returning the correct colour we've got purple there for the 11th of December and we have yellow there for the 14th of February now what if those dates were not in order so now the first column of that colours table the dates are kind of jumbled up and I need to perform this same task. Now in Excel 365, we can use XLOOKUP. With XLOOKUP, I can look for that date value in A2. Within the lookup array, so it's not the whole table this time, I'll just select the column of dates, comma. The return array is the colors column. I'll skip the if not found, and then for that match mode, I'm going to choose minus one for the exact match or next smaller, which is exactly what VLOOKUP was doing. But with XLOOKUP, the order is not so important. I mean, I'm not encouraging you to not put things in order, but with VLOOKUP is essential, XLOOKUP is more durable and continues to return the correct values where VLOOKUP would have failed. So I still get yellow for the 14th of February, even though we can see the order of those dates may have confused it. So very, very good. So for this third example, we now want to return this rate from a table named rates, where we have a product, a date, and then that rate. So we've got those two conditions. So we need to look up the date in those ranges, but it also needs to be for the correct product, whether it's A, B or C. So for the first product A, 28th of October, we're looking at a 10% rate. Whereas for B, 21st of March, then we're looking at a 5% rate. Product C, 5th of November, that is in that 11% rate. And then that last product A, which is actually an earlier date than the first product A in that range. So that will be the 3% at first row of the rates table. So we've seen an example with VLOOKUP. We've seen an example of XLOOKUP. For this one, I like to bring in index and also match. So I'll get this index function to return from the rate column of that rates table. 
Now, this stuff doesn't have to be in tables, but those of you who watch a lot of my stuff know that I love tables. Now, a comma will bring us on to the row number. So this is the big one. We need to find the correct row for that product and for that date range. So I'm going to move into the formula bar here as it's going to be a bit easier to see. And let me start a new row. And I'm going to use the max ifs function. Max ifs will enable us to use multiple conditions. And I want to find the maximum date, so the most recent date, which is before the date that I'm looking for. So the max range is going to be the date column of rates. The criteria range is going to also be the date column of the rates table, comma, and then for the criteria, I'm going to ask that it is less than ampersand the date that I've got in cell A2 here. So I want to return the biggest date that is smaller than the one in A2, which in this example is that date in cell G3, that second row of the rates table. That is the biggest date smaller than 28th of October 2020. Now I should actually bring in an equal sign here as well. None of the dates are the same in this scenario, but just in case. Now comma after that because we do need a second condition and that is for it to be the right product. So let me select the product range as the criteria range and then the product that we've got in B2. So not only do we need that date, but it's got to be that product. I can now close off that max function. So that's why we're using max ifs to do that conditional logic and to find that correct date. What we are ultimately looking for here, though, is to return that row for the index function to return the rate. So I'm just going to put a match function around this. This is an index and match so that that max ifs function will form the lookup value of that match function. Coming to the end, I will put in my comma for the lookup array, and that is going to be the dates column of that rates table, comma zero for the exact match. A close bracket for match and index, and if I press enter to run that and copy it down, you can see that we do have the correct rates that we were looking for before we started the formula. But we may still come across a problem with this formula. Although the answers at the moment are correct, let's imagine another scenario where the date for product B here in the first range, maybe that is actually the 29th of October 2020, which currently returns an error because there is no date in the rates table as early as that. So over in the table, let me change the date for product B here to the 26th of October, which is actually the same date as the previous row, that product A. So you can see product A and product B in the rates table have the same date there of that rate change. And the problem is that the formula is returning 10%. Now it shouldn't be doing that, it should be 2%, but it finds the 26th of October for product A before it finds product B. So we need to add a little bit more to our formula. Let me come back to cell C2, and let's open this up a little bit more. So with this max ifs function, we're going to find the maximum date before the date we're looking for. And on the end of that, say, and the product we're looking for, which is B2. Then if I bring it down one more for clarity, let me resize that formula box a tad. We also want that in the lookup array. So looking in the date column of rates and the product column 
of rates as well. So we need to match that, that date in the range and the product. So if I press enter on that and copy it down, it now successfully returns the 2% for product B of that date range. Now that formula is an array formula. I'm using Excel 365, so it's all good. If you're using the version prior to 365, then you would have to do control shift and enter. And you may also have to put a max function into an array because max ifs, I believe came out in 2019. I may be wrong on that, but it hasn't been around forever. But it's great to see that there are numerous solutions to these kinds of tasks. I hope you found this video useful. Please take a moment to subscribe so that you are notified about the next Excel video releases. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I will see you soon.